Fred, I'm interested in the size of the universe. And lots of my friends, cosmologists, tell me about multiverse and multi-worlds theories and uh, pocket universes branching out all the time through inflation and various things. You've focused on the end of the universe and what happens at the end when all uh, elements in the universe have uh, evaporated. And at that moment, there are only particles there, space continues to expand and, and maybe even more so because the, there's more and more dark energy the density of, uh, that, that's related to the, the volume of space. So how, how, does, how big does that get? <laughs> well, when you ask that question, it's important to make a distinction or a careful um, determination of what you mean by that. So right. the universe has at least three different size scales that could be the answer to your question. Okay. So let's go through this briefly. The universe has an observable horizon. And right now that horizon is the same order of magnitude as the light crossing distance. So since the universe is 14 billion years old, that horizon size is order of magnitude 14 billion light years across, okay? So that's the size of the universe that we have today that is also the size of the universe where we can do experiments and say anything about the contents of the universe. Now, if you ask the question, what's outside that boundary? The answer is more stuff. Yeah. In other words, more universe like our universe that probably has the same laws of physics as our universe, even though we can't officially measure things out there. And how do you know that? We don't know that for sure, yeah. because we can't officially measure right. things out right. there. But given what we understand about how universes work from the Big Bang moment through inflation on to the present day, our understanding is that the space-time out beyond that boundary is like the space-time here. Right. So we have the horizon. Outside of that, we have more universe that we can't access. Like ours. But it's presumably like ours. But if I go far enough away from that, the universe is probably no longer flat it might start to curve, it might reconnect on itself, it might connect to other universes, it might do a whole host of other things. So there is a larger boundary, much larger than our observable universe, that is a kind of boundary to our universe. And then beyond that, there are these other universes, parts of the multiverse that you alluded to. Now, back to the question of what happens in the future. What happens in the future is actually remarkably easy. If the cosmological constant is a constant, or if the dark energy doesn't change with time, then very shortly into the future of our universe, the dark energy will be the dominant energy component. Mm -hmm. Well, it's already the dominant right. energy co component, but will be stronger, uh, stronger. The, the only yeah. energy component <laughs> in the near future. And then we will have a well-defined horizon just beyond the current observable horizon, and that will be the only part of the universe that we can access. So. The future of our universe is such that every bound structure in the universe today will become its own little island universe. So in the far future of our universe, the only structures we will be able to see are those that are currently in our local group. We live in a little cluster called the local group that consists of the Milky Way and Andromeda and the Large Magellanic Cloud and the Small Magellanic Cloud and a few other dwarf galaxies. Right, so and that's all that we will be able to see in the future. So how big the universe will be to anybody in our little patch of space-time will be this horizon size, which is just beyond the 14 billion light years of today's observable universe. But parts of today's observable universe will go outside our capability of seeing it. Exactly. So um, astronomy will be more boring in the future, whereas today we can see lots of external galaxies and galaxy clusters. Mm -hmm. By the time the universe is only hundreds of billions of years older than today, all of the other galaxies and clusters of galaxies will have passed outside our horizon and we won't be able to see them anymore. Hmm. And when you go out even further and, and, and to the point where you have the evaporation uh, and, and... You uh, mean further in time? Yes, yes, further in time into the future and you have an evaporation, but, and so, so, but, but space continues to expand because yes, you still have the dark energy, supposedly. Yeah, space continues to expand, but the horizon size stays fixed. So the um, energy density of the universe will approach a constant value, and it will, even though space time is expanding and things will continue to expand outside of our horizon, the horizon size will stay more or less fixed, and the size of the universe will still be that size. And that size will be somewhat bigger than the current observable universe. But that's a size from the perspective of an observer where there, there won't be any observers, but if there were an observer yeah. in, in, that, in that universe, that's what that observer would see. Exactly. Right. And, but beyond that, what we observe today would be filling an even larger space-time uh, 
that's structure. that's true. It's just that no observer can see, yeah can, right. can see all of those things at the same right. time. The observer has to pick his or her island universe right. to live in. Right. And and uh, if you look at our observable universe today, and then go out to the t time frame that you should pick, I mean, 10 to the 50th, 10 to the 100th years, whatever you want, how many of those individual uh, um, island universes with the, with the horizon that we have today will there be? Well, it depends a little on how you do your accounting, but the way I would answer your question is to say, again, that every bound structure in the universe today will live in the middle of an island universe. Own. So the island universes that matter are those that will contain a cluster of galaxies. So the answer to your question is, how many clusters of galaxies are there in our universe today? Okay. Okay. And, so so that th the answer is you know a billion, depending on how you do the accounting. Right. Right. Because if there are a ten to the tenth, uh, t you know roughly a hundred billion, ten to the tenth, ten to the eleventh numbers of galaxies uh, yeah it depends on the galaxies span a wide range of sizes so it yeah. depends how far okay, down know, okay. you go it's right. still counted as a galaxy uh, okay. so okay um, but th those are the orders of magnitude we're talking about. okay so uh, but then each one of those that that has like for example our local group eventually that will evaporate in, in each of the uh, each of the elements well it and won't so quite evaporate within each island universe each structure will remain bound to itself so the, the the clusters of galaxies will not be um, ripped apart by the Hubble flow, the expanding universe, but they will remain gravitationally bound to each other. So then what happens within each cluster um, will be the determination of the future history of the universe. So in that um, cluster, the galaxies will collide, the stars will die, the white dwarfs will hoover up dark matter particles and radiate them back. Eventually protons will decay and even later black holes will decay, but all of those life cycles will play out within that island universe. And at the end of that, that entire cycle, when you have just random photons, they will still be bound within that so-called local group, which wouldn't be a local group the way we call it today, it'd just be the, the energy equivalent of photons of what that was. Yeah, and the photons will be, since the universe is expanding, as you pointed out, they will um, be stretched yeah, to yeah, ever, yeah. ever, ever yeah. larger wavelengths. So yeah. as the universe continues to age, and the universe continues to expand, those photons will become longer and longer in wavelength. In fact, all of those photons will eventually become so long in wavelength that they won't matter anymore. And what will matter is that that horizon that's produced by the dark energy will produce a kind of inside-out Hawking radiation. That's probably not the best description <laughs> of it, but it will generate its own bath of photons where the wavelengths are comparable to the horizon size, so 10 billion light years across. <laughs> So the future of the universe in terms of the radiation content is to have a nearly thermal bath of photons with wavelengths of 10 billion light years. I mean, that is, that, that sounds uh, inc just, uh, uh, that, def that defies common sense in any sense. <laughs> now, I should remark that this is in fact an extrapolation so that everything that we've talked about is predicated on the fact that one, we know the laws of physics and that they don't change. And in uh. particular, in order for the universe to continue to accelerate, the dark energy has to remain constant or nearly so. Right, sure. There are other possibilities. Right. If the dark energy increases in energy density with time, then you could rip the galaxies apart like you talked right, right, about. Right, right. And if it decreases with time or goes through some phase transition, then there will be um, commensurate modifications in this future projection. Really, so to, to think how big the universe will become is uh, is intricately bound to the question of what's happening to the, the various particles and the structure of the universe itself. You, you, can't, you can't talk about one without talking about the other. So defining the size of the universe turns out to be somewhat of a complicated <laughs> question. But when you look into the future of the universe, um, how it is defined depends very sensitively on the contents of the universe, in particular, and especially the dark energy content.